Hello again, this is Python in Excel part eight. In the time column, the values are hours, minutes, and seconds. Hours are followed by an H, minutes are followed by an apostrophe, and seconds are followed by a double quote. For the winner of each year, so rank one of each year, we see the total time. And for everybody else in that year, we see an increment relative to the winner's time. Rank two finished two hours, 59 minutes and 21 seconds after the winner. Rank five finished four hours, 58 minutes and 44 seconds after the winner. We need to convert these times into a decimal that Excel can recognize as a time value. Generally speaking, the approach will be to identify rank one's time and then add all the other ranks to that time to get their time. The one thing we need to consider, however, is that each year uh, the ranks start over, of course they do, so rank one will have an actual time in each year and ranks two through however many uh, participants there were will have uh, an increment. So we need some kind of function, some kind of process that will do the calculation for one year at a time. And we do that using a group by object. So in this cell here in D2, I've got this line that says groups equals DF dot group by by equals year. I am grouping the data frame by the year column. Let's take a look at how that looks in Power Query. You remember this group by button up here. You can hit the group by button and depending on what columns you've got selected, it will create this some version of this line. Table.group, we're grouping the source table by year and what we want to return is all of the rows for each group. And what that gives us is a new table where you've got a year column, and then on each row, you've got a table containing the rows for that year. So this is the rows for 1903, this is for 1925, this is 1937, and so on and so forth. So what we would be able to do in Power Query, and how, what I'll show you that we can do in Python, is apply a function to each of these tables one at a time. So I'm using the def keyword to define a function. I've called the function process time by year, and the argument to the function is a group. So that is going to be one of the groups created by the group by object. The first line in this function creates this time values variable, and it takes the time column from the group data frame, considers it a string, and uses the extract method to extract parts of the string. Now, if you look at the string here, it says 94H33 apostrophe 14 double quote, and the one below it says 2H59 apostrophe 21 double quote. But if we take a look at 1925, you'll see that there are there are rows here which don't have an hour component. So this guy finished 54 minutes and 20 seconds after the leader. So we need a, a flexible pattern that will extract information into three different values, hour, minute, and second. And that is exactly what this regular expression does. This looks complicated. And it took me a while to pin down the exact syntax. So don't feel bad if you, if you think, well, I'll never get a hang of that because I think nobody ever really gets a hang of uh, regular expressions in all of their glorious detail. Let me explain how it works. First of all, we we notice that within parentheses, this is called a capture group. Okay, so this first capture group is saying one or more digits. Question mark indicates that this capture group is optional. So optionally, one or more digits, followed by optionally an H. And that accounts for those rows where we don't have an hour component. This capture group is again one or more digits, optionally, followed by optionally an apostrophe, and so on. This one is optionally one or more digits, followed by optionally double quotes for the minutes. So these three capture groups, which are separated by spaces, will account for the three possible parts that we might find in the time column. So extract here works on the time column with the regular expression I just explained, and it applies the fill na function at the end. So if any of these capture groups are not found, then by default, the component of the time values of which there are three will be not a number, it will be that nan value that I talked about in a previous video. This fill na will put a zero in there so that for those rows in 1925 that we looked at, there'll be a zero in the hour component. The next line creates what is called a time delta object. And a time delta object is almost exactly the same as a duration data type in Power Query. This string is being created by taking the hour component from the time values variable and putting an H after it, the minute component and putting an M after it, and the second component and putting 
an S after it. So that creates a string which is passed into this two time delta function and that creates a time delta object. But because it's applied to a series, it's creating a series of time delta objects that is as long as the group is tall. In this line, we're doing some math on the time delta series. Remember each row in the time delta series is a time delta object. We want to add the winner's time, which is at index zero. We use I location to get index zero. That's the winner's time delta. And this represents all of the time deltas for everybody else in that group. So within one year, everyone from the second index, remember Python objects are zero indexed, from the second index to, and because there's nothing after the colon, to the end of the series. So for everybody who didn't win, add to their time delta the winner's time delta. And the result will be that we will have a time delta that represents the total time for each participant. This last line is just creating a new column called time, lowercase, in the group that was passed into the function. And it is doing that by taking the total seconds of those time delta objects in that series and dividing them by this multiple, which essentially converts this entire value into a decimal day and it's put in the time column and then the group is returned as the result of the function. Now that we've got a function, we just need to apply the function to the groups. Remember the groups is the group by object. Um, we apply the function using this line here, which I've commented out. I'm going to uncomment it now. And we are reassigning to the data frame the application of the function to the groups group by object. As you can see, it has added a time column and the time column is a decimal because Excel wants a decimal for a time, representation of this time value. So looking at it as a decimal is probably not much use. So let's use a custom cell format to display it in a sensible way. I'm using D days, and then let's just change this HH, MM and SS, and that will show it as something a bit more readable. So three days, 22 hours, 33 minutes and 14 seconds is that. And then the second person is four days, one hour, 32 minutes and 35 seconds and so on and so forth. So we've converted this kind of weird looking time column into something that's a bit more sensible and each person has a total time. As a last step, we've got a couple of columns here that we don't really need anymore. And I would like to convert these uh, column headers into lowercase so that we've got a consistent naming convention. I've got two lines where I'm first dropping the rider and time column. Let's see that that works. So the rider and time column is gone. I now want to convert these column names to lowercase. And that is done with this line. We literally assign df.columns.string.lower to df.columns and that renames or rather converts the column names to lowercase. That's it for today. We created a group by object. We applied a function to each group within the group by object. And then we did a few steps to clean up the format of the table. So we've got consistently named column names and we removed columns that we don't need. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.